All right, what you're looking at here is the Achilles Wire Mac wire binding machine. This particular unit that you're looking at is a three to one pitch. It is also available in a two to one pitch model. Um, pitch basically means, uh, three to one pitch means it punches three holes per inch, and two to one means it punches two holes per inch. And just to give you a better idea as to what that looks like, this is a three to one pitch wire binding element, and this is a two to one pitch wire binding element. And you'll notice that the three to one pitch has the loops closer together, whereas the two to one pitch is spaced farther apart. And really a lot of which type you choose is depends completely on your preference. I will, however, give you an advantage of each. The two to one pitch does give you the option to bind up to one and one quarter inch stack of paper, whereas the three to one pitch lets you go up to nine sixteenths inch of paper. Um, this particular unit will do up to nine sixteenths inch. Uh, so the two to one pitch can bind more paper. However, the three to one pitch has the holes closer together and many people prefer the tighter look. So it really just depends on your preference and how many sheets of paper you need to bind. Now out of the box, this machine is very easy to set up. Um, the handles will not be attached, but they essentially just have a screw on each one and they just slide right on. They're keyed to a square hole. They just fit right on and then just uh, put, the, put the thumb screw in and just tighten that up and you're good to go. There are two of them. One closes the wire and the other one actually punches the paper. Now that's pretty much all there is to the setup of this machine out of the box. Now there's some fine, there is some fine tuning you'll have to do to get this to look the best possible. Like I said, it is a three to one pitch machine, which means it'll punch three holes per inch. And all you really need to do is just, just slip the paper in here. You want, you're going to want to make sure that it hits the back stop so that it punches evenly across the whole sheet of paper. And you basically just pull your arm down, it punches through the paper, and there you go. Now you'll notice we do have a half hole on the end there. So what I would recommend doing is disengaging that last die. So now when we punch the paper, we no longer have that half hole on the side there. Now for some reason the paper is a little bit bigger than 11 inch, um, a little bit smaller, you're doing a, a, a note card or legal size paper and you do end up with a half hole, you can disengage any, any of these dies here. There are a total of 40 punching dies. And I'll just show you an example of what that looks like. Basically, any of these that you pull out, that particular hole will be disengaged and it, and it will not punch a hole. So it'll look a little funny when I punch it because I've just randomly pulled some of these out, but it'll give you an idea as to what it looks like. And basically, everywhere where I pulled out the disengaging die, a hole did not punch. And that's, that's really nice, especially when you're doing different sizes of paper, calendars, notebooks, cookbooks, reports. It, it's ideal for a, a variety of projects. If you don't have the paper fully flush against the back of the back plate here, and if it's, if it's just a little crooked, now that may be what you're looking at. A, a crooked bound document that won't look good and the wire binding element won't be able to go through those holes anyway. It'll fall right back out. Um, another nice thing about the wire mac is it does have an adjustable margin depth. And the green means it is punching pretty close to the edge of the paper. Red means it's punching far into the paper. And we've been punching with the green so it's almost right to the edge of the paper. And now that I've got it on red, I'll show you just how big a difference there is. And why would you want to do that? Well, if you're punching few sheets of paper, say an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, then you're going to want it pretty close to the edge. The pages will turn very easily. If you're doing a thicker book, say 9 sixteenths inch on this 3 to 1 machine, or if you're doing the 1 and 1 quarter inch on the 2 to 1 pitch machine, you're going to want it to punch farther into the paper, perhaps not this far, but you're going to want to punch in farther because as you turn the pages on a thicker book, 
the pages have a tendency to rip out more easily. So if you punch farther into the paper, that page is going to stay secure and won't rip out. Now, if you're not entirely certain as to where you need that margin depth, it's a good idea to start off with green, which is not punching very far, because that's the way most documents are bound. This particular binding machine does have an indicator that will let you know what you need to set that on. And if you push down here, this is spring-loaded, and it has some sandpaper right here to keep things held in place. Basically, just take your stack of paper that you're going to bind, stick it into there, and let it just sit down. Now, over on the side, let me turn this around for you. There's actually a color chart there that will tell you what you should have your margin depth set to. Right now, and it may be hard to see with the camera, but it is actually pointing at one quarter inch, which means I have a one quarter inch stack of paper. It also means I need to use a one quarter inch binding element, and it's on the green still, so that means I need to leave the margin depth on the green. Now, if I were doing, say, 5 16 inch, I'd need to set it onto the orange, and if I were doing 9 16 inch, it would recommend putting that on the gray. So that's kind of helpful. It also has a guide up on top of the machine here to kind of let you know what kind of a what what the diameter is on the binding element that you'll be using. Many times a box may be unmarked, and you don't really know what you're pulling out of there. And if you're not entirely sure how big the binding element is, you can actually take your binding element and hold it right up to this chart here. And I can see, and hopefully you can too, that this is a quarter inch binding element. It fits on there perfectly. And it'll basically show you anything from 3 16ths all the way up to 9 16ths for the 3 to 1 pitch. And for 2 to 1 pitch, which it has the same sticker on both machines, will uh, go all the way from 3 16ths inch over here all the way up to 1 quarter inch. Just to let you know what size you're using. Now, the 1 and 1 quarter inch uh, diameter, as you can see, is pretty big. You're going to be binding a fairly thick book with that diameter of a binding element. This machine is made out of metal. Um, you can't quite get the feel like I can, but it's very heavy to pick up. You can tell it's made out of tough, durable metal, which is ideal because it means the machine will last you a long time. Um, whereas many of the entry-level wire binding machines uh, tend to wear out more quickly, and going with this machine from the get-go will last you a long time versus having to go through several entry-level machines to get the same lifespan. This machine weighs 45 pounds, which kind of gives you, uh, gives you an idea as to how heavy it is, how durable it is. All of our customers that have bought the Kiwi's brand binding machines, whether it's coil, wire, or comb, have all been very pleased with it. Essentially, with wire binding, you punch the holes, you put the element through the holes, and then you close it back here. Now, depending on the diameter of wire that you're going to be using, you're going to need, a, you're going to, need to adjust how far the closing apparatus closes the wire. You don't want to close it too much or it'll look bad, and if you don't close it enough, pages will start falling out. So up here on the top of the machine, depending on the binding element that you're using, it's got a dial, dial process that you use to adjust how far the, the apparatus closes. Now I've got it set to 9 16 inch right now, which means it will not let this close any farther than 9 16 inch. It gives you a perfect bind. Now if I set that to 3 16 inch, which is the smallest diameter you can use, the most it does close a lot farther. And it has a sandpaper type element on each side here to keep that wire binding element in place so that it doesn't slip around so that the bind does look very good. Now I'm going to be doing a quarter inch document so we'll have that set to one quarter inch which means it'll stop right there. Now the, th the two to one pitch machine works pretty much the same. The biggest difference is the closing apparatus is a little bit different because it is handling a thicker stack of paper and of course the punching die is going to punch a different format of holes. So now I'm going to punch a quarter inch stack of paper. Again, make sure it is flush against the back of that backstop. As you've seen what 
could possibly happen. Now this machine will punch up to 20 sheets of standard 20 pound stock paper, um, which is basically what you'd use in a copy machine. You can also do card stock, and I'm going to be using a linen report cover for the back. And I will be using a clear cover for the front. Now you want to make sure the paper is squared up so that you can see through it. If you're doing a larger stack of paper, say a 9 16 inch book, you may want to consider purchasing a jogger to keep everything squared up. Now I'm going to be putting the back cover on the front. Um, it may seem a little odd at first, but uh, you'll understand here in just a minute. Now after you've been punching documents for a while, um, there is a catch train here that will catch, catch the punched paper. And it does take a lot to fill that up, but if you've been doing a lot of books, uh, just simply pull it out. It does completely remove from the machine, and you can just take that over to a garbage can and empty it out, uh, much like you would with a three-hole punch. And then it just slips right back into here, and you just push it in all the way, and you're pretty much ready to go and bind a few more books. Now I'm going to take three to one pitch binding element. I'll put it in this clamping mechanism here, and that will hold it in place. So you just take your punched paper, and you're now able to very easily insert that twin loop wire through the punched holes. So just bring that forward. Now you'll notice that it is through all the holes. Now, you, now what you're going to want to do is just kind of lift up on this spring-loaded mechanism here, and it'll allow you to just slip that right out. You want to be careful so it doesn't slip back out of the holes. And then I recommend just tipping it kind of the other direction, keeping that pretty much horizontal, and setting it down into the closing mechanism. Now I've already set this for one quarter inch, so it, it should close it up just fine with one pull of the handle. Now as I bring the clamping mechanism on that binding element, you will feel it rest on it, but that doesn't mean that it's closed the wire. You will need to give a little bit of force to finish closing that. And when you let that up, you'll notice that the wire has been perfectly closed to the precise spot that it needs to be in order to complete the binding process. And you can see that seam at the moment where the wire actually closed and kind of met up. So what you'll do now is take that back cover that you put on the front, wrap that around, and now you can't see that seam anymore, and gives the wire bound document a very nice and professional look. So if you're looking for an alternative to a coffee shop or a print shop, and you'd like to create your own booklets and reports in-house, the WireMac 3 to 1 is definitely an ideal solution to all of your wire binding needs.